All right, this video is about timelines. How long should it take you, or maybe I should say it, um, how long could it take you, and how long did I take? So you can use that information and kind of help you understand what to expect. Especially if you, it depends what you're doing, right? If you're doing, uh, uh, you know, one program or this program or that program, they're all different. And you're gonna get different results, different timelines. So, right, for me, I had to, my timeline was, it was uh, about growing and knowledge by making mistakes, right? I had to make mistakes and be stuck and to stop one program and do my own thing, right? Um, like programs like Gupta, DNRS, there's a bunch of other ones out there. It all depends. Um, for me, when I was doing DNRS, you know, it was my physical symptoms started to go, it was great. And around the eight, eight month mark, eight months to a year, I got stuck. And uh, the OCD part was really kicking in the overdrive, right? And it wasn't working for me anymore. DNRS just was not able to get me where I needed to go. So I was in a, you know, I was in a lost at sea for a bit. I had to figure it out, right? I had to make mistakes, pivot, readjust. I became my own guide. I became a guinea pig, testing shit out on myself. Um, until, you know, I tried different programs like the Dare Response and ERP therapy, right? I tapped into that and it was like a whole, and it was very triggering to, to, to adjust because when you're doing one program, you want to stick to it. But the thing is for me, I was doing that, but I got, I, I got stuck and, you know, slamming into a wall and I got lucky that I've, you know, I was on a path, I was going a little, like a little bit off the path stuck a little bit, you know, changed my tire, backed out, Oof. and I'm grateful that some of these other programs didn't work for me. I'm grateful that I was stuck. I'm grateful that I got triggered because I had to have the balls to go, okay, I'm going to ask this question. I'm going to ask myself, is this going to work? And I said, I'm afraid to say no. And that was fucking scary, right? It was scary. And that's, you know, those are normal questions to have, but you, when you think you still have a path and you're, you're like, yeah, no, no, no. But then this new problem's coming and nothing's changing. And you know why nothing's changing afterwards. Right? You know why? Okay, looking back, that's why. Okay, it was triggering. It was scary. I had, a, I had to take a leap of faith. And the way I did is by asking other um, people that were on the journey, recovered. And I asked a bunch of people and I noticed a lot of patterns. And I lost a lot of, I also asked people that weren't recovered that were also stuck like me. There was many of them, many people that were stuck like me. And I started to notice a pattern and it was all of the OCD, right? Some programs are not equipped to handle that and OCD is a big factor in recovery and some people didn't you know I mentioned it I talked to some people they didn't want to hear it they're like no they were triggered uh, I you know I got kicked out of some programs I because uh, I brought it up and people didn't like it and you know I had to readjust so talking with some other people that recovered they, yeah I went through that blah blah and I noticed I did this and other people were like yeah, I noticed I did this and I saw some some patterns and I and I go, oh, okay. And then I had a friend of mine tell me, you should look into um, th this other app and this um, ERP therapy. So I'm like, I'm like uh, normally I would not do that because it was so triggering because it's, you know, you're trying something else. I didn't want to be that type of person to do that because I know you won't move forward. You'll get, if you try all these different things, 
like I always say, you'll get stuck and you you never move forward and you stay sick. I didn't want to do that, but with her, I saw that she fully recovered. And her, her methods that she learned and she was t telling me about, I thought were fascinating. And they made so much sense, right? With some of these programs, I didn't really understand why we're doing these methods or how or what's the reason behind it. I was just doing them, right? You just, no, don't just do it, right? And there was a lot of emphasis on neuroplasticity. And uh, I'm finding that the neuroplasticity isn't that important. Your brain rewires itself. You don't need to sit there and make sure it's, you know, you don't need to micromanage anything. It's gonna do it on, on its own. Like, it's like, you don't need to micromanage your liver. You don't need to micromanage your your bladder or your 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 gut or your biome. The more it it regulates, the more your baseline comes down, the, the alarms turn off, and you um, switch to rest and digest. The more these other these things fix on their own, because your your body and your brain knows how to heal. It knows how to do all this stuff. So the, the brain does that itself. You don't have to sit there and go, okay, you're getting closer. Okay, okay, now, neural pathway, yay, we did it, yes, yeah. It's all about the, you know, the structural things about the brain and, you know, the, you know, looking at the liver and going, okay, okay, just a little more. All right, you got all that beer out from yesterday? Good job, yay! Like, that doesn't do anything for you, right? It goes a lot deeper. It's, it's the... The emotional parts it's the you know the alarm system understanding your alarm system and that's in intricate it's all over the place how it works how it responds to you and how you respond to it the communication loop that you have with it right understanding that is the important part the neural pathways they they change as a consequence they do what they have to do according it's monitoring you it's going okay you're doing what you're doing all right I'm gonna go work on a neural pathway, blah, 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 right? You don't have to worry about it. Like everything else in your body recovers and regulates as a consequence of how you're communicating with this, the security system. The response that you're giving it and going, I feel like this, monitor me, what do you think of this? Okay, let's turn off alarms, okay, right? Your brain's there to serve you, but it's up to you to give it the proper information. That's what you should be learning. Not if you're creating the neural pathway. So I had to change everything that I was learning with some of these programs. And I'm still grateful that I am grateful for these programs. I'm grateful for DNRS too because it was a stepping stone for me to a new world, to the mind-body space, right? Without, without being stuck or, or using these programs, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't get the clarity. I wouldn't make the mistakes. I wouldn't fail so that I would have to readjust and pivot and become my own guide, right? Taking things from uh, different books, different modalities, TMS, the TMS world, right? Right, like the body keeps the score or this book. The brain that changes itself, right? Uh, jo you know, Joe Dispenza, TMS, Gupta, DNRS, uh, Dr. Sornos, that whole world, he's he's like the godfather, right? Claire Weeks, the DARE response, ERP therapy. There's so much shit out there, right? And I went through, all, through it all to give me guidance to go, all right, and talking with people, just talking with people with their, with their journey and seeing patterns and try becoming your own guinea pig and trying all these things out. And that made my my timeline longer, right? Because I'm a person that I, I have to do things correctly and I wanna make sure I write, find the right path. Like normally I wouldn't give that advice to anybody unless I know the answers and I go, here you go. I don't want you looking around, you don't need to because that's just gonna cause, that's why I say pick a path, stick to it, but pick, pick my path, right? It's, you know, it's kind of funny how that works because I, I know the proof is in the pudding, right? The way I do things, it's straight to the point, A, B, C, right? There's no, 
going around and trying this and going and doing that. You don't get a big, thick book. You don't get... It's just getting you recovered so you can live your life. If you want to do anything else, you want to dig for trauma, go ahead. Join some of these other groups where, you know, that's really important. If you want to um, try extra things, go nuts. That's fine. So with timelines, I was, you know, off the path for a bit. I had to find the strength to get off the path. And there's a while there where you, you kind of re reprogram, right? You, you kind of, everything you learned, I had to kind of purge out and start again and move forward again, right? So I was backing up and then I was like, all right, here we go. And then, you, you know, you adjust it while you go. You go, oh fuck, that's not working. Okay, stick through it anyway. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Oh, that figured itself out. Interesting. Okay. Momentum. Okay. Now I see a pattern. Oh, this is going away. Oh, I'm feeling better. Okay. Oh, this is getting worse. Why is this getting worse? Oh, this is getting even more worse. Why is this? Should I stick with it? Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. Fuck it. I'm going to stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. Stick. Let's see what happens if I just stick with it. Let's just see. If it... Let's see what happens when I do these extreme exposures and I call it on and I ask for more. Let's see what happens when I make it, you know, really extreme. Oh, it fucking works. Oh my goodness interesting and then you know I was in my own world so then I thought you know I'm going to go back in some of these forums of uh, these programs and I'm going to see you know because I, I couldn't go on them anymore because I was so triggered because my OCD went Whoosh! physical symptoms start recovering OCD started going <laughs> started going <laughs> right and uh my brain had to figure out other ways to get my attention because it, it used to use physical alarms to get my attention. But now that these physical alarms are off, it's like, I'm still perceiving danger, buddy. I still got to get your attention, man, because my job is to keep you alive. I still think there's a, a tiger on your back because of all the years of, you know, curveballs that life's been throwing at you. I'm perceiving that you're still got a tiger on your back so how am I going to get your attention eh? well you did it with mental symptoms mental alarms that's how you got my attention my OCD went like this and some programs well most of them are not equipped for that they don't know how to handle that so I went into the OCD world and I was working with programs that specialize just in o with OCD and anxiety Right now, I was thinking to myself, well, these OCD and anxiety programs, like the DARE response, how is that? It's meant for anxiety. It's not meant for physical symptoms, right? But actually, I started to learn with all the stuff that I knew before that I could use that also for physical symptoms. And so I took some of that, some of the ERP therapy, and I started mixing it up, adding some salt, right? And using my own ups and downs and failures and fuck ups and noticing patterns, and then uh, I brought it to another level. Because when you're dealing with 70 symptoms, you know you need something that's structured. You need you need a routine. You need a schedule, right? And you need to know how to deal with OCD. The whole OCD world, just like anxiety world, is filled with 99% of bullshit. The advice that you see with anxiety and OCD keeps people stuck and keeps people running to uh, medication right people are just they don't know what's going on because they don't they you know they just don't know and there's so much garbage out there people are just being told just be in the present moment all the time what you you know we know what when you if you hide from your thoughts about being in the present moment you're just gonna what you resist what you resist persists right it's like they say uh don't time travel you know um, anxiety will get you in the past so don't time travel well that's true anxiety will get you in the past anxiety will get you in the future of course that so you don't so people shouldn't be thinking about the future right that's what they say because it'll get you there but guess what it'll get you in the present moment just the same it doesn't fucking matter it's an alarm 
an alarm that's inside of you. It'll find you wherever you go. It's like, oh, there he goes. Okay, fucking present moment. <laughs> okay. Right, you can look at a, um, you can count backwards all you want. You can look at a tree and your surroundings all you want. If you're not using the right methods, you're going to be using that as a coping mechanism constantly, which just reaffirms to the brain that you are perceiving danger. You're running away from them by using these coping mechanisms. So you'll always be stuck. You might feel good for five minutes because you're distracting constantly, right? You're making poppets, making deals, but that just keeps you stuck. So that big elephant in the room, I had to learn about it. I had to become friends with them. And so I went down that world, that route. And that's what got me out. So my timeline was longer. Right? And the, the, the thing I want to make sure that people know is be prepared to be doing this work for at least two years. Right? Six to 12 months. Six to 12 months, you're just getting a rhythm going. You're just getting started. And, and that might be triggering for some people, but so fucking what? If you think about it, all the fucking years that you've been through shit, the, your life's been throwing you curveballs outside, like out the ass, curveballs, curveballs, curveballs. For let's say, for me, it was 30 years I've been going through life, filling my bucket up, showing my brain that I'm in survival state, right? With all the addictions, smoking, drinking, heavily binge drinking, bad relationships surgeries, fucking medications, right? Smoking cigarettes, fucking... That's just, you know, all... The, you, there's a video I'll show you how, how you got sick. There's a, like a list of all the things that got you there. And you're just abusing your body for 30 years. Your mind, right? For 30 years. And it's, it's keeping you alive. It's doing its job. It's doing an amazing job. And you're expecting yourself... To switch it all off with just like a switch in what like a couple months that's not realistic right a computer okay it's instant everything's instant what you do is instant but we're biological you know we're we have a physical biological body suit right we have our soul in there body suit right and it takes time for it to readjust to create this is where the neuroplasticity comes in right it takes time to create new neural pathways to adjust you're going through all the layers of the onion, right? It takes time, right? Right. You got to do the exposure therapy on like one subject, and it takes time to turn the alarm off for each thing, right? It's a process. It goes in stages. It takes time. But if you think about it, thirty years of bullshit, and it took took me three years, two years to get my life back, right? And I've been doing this for three years. That's amazing. That is actually super fast. That's like light, lightning speed. That is really fast. There's not too many people that have been able to recover from 70 symptoms plus the OCD and be thriving and happy in two years. And I've been doing this for three. So when people get triggered and go, oh my God, Really? Three years? Oh my god. Two. I'm saying two years. Okay? And just know that in the two years, you're going to start feeling better. And just think. Two years of hard work. First year is a shit show. Just so you know right now. First year is a fucking shit show. But you need that shit show. The first year is very important. Without that first year, you won't get to the second year. First year is a shit show. This is where you earn your stripes. This is where... You know, you either do it or you don't. And that's who recovers and who doesn't. If you can stick to it for a year, you're going to make it to the second year. And the rest just follows in. So just think, if you do this for two years and you recover, this is the stuff that's going to last you for a lifetime. You're going to be able to have a happy, thriving life for the next 50, 60 years. I think that's worth it. I think two years is fuck all, if you think about it. Some people don't want that. Some people go, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for to fuck around and make this into a, a big, big program with steps. Fuck that shit. 
no, I want to be good. Like, give me a supplement. Give me, I want to be done in like six months. Like, this is stupid. I don't have time for that. Okay, if you don't have time for that, your body is going to show you how much time you have. You're not going to be able to live a normal life. You're going to be stuck doing coping mechanisms for the rest of your life. And your quality of life will always be, uh, uh, right? Sure, you won't have to do the hard work for two years. That's true. You'll get out of that, right? You'll jump around. You know, you'll keep doing what you're doing, right? And you're just going to be, uh, for 30 years, uh, 40 years, uh, suffering, uh, not living a full life with the full, you know, you have potential to be able to live a full, happy life thriving life it's just going to be a bad quality life of suffering and who knows you might not even make it for 30 40 years and that might be another 10 or 15 so isn't it worth it to put the time and work in for two years two and a half me i'm doing this for the rest of my life this is just a part of my life like people they go they meditate, they play hockey, they go for walks, right? They go to church. They have something, they have things in their life that they always do every day, and it's never going to change. It's just a part of their life, right? They pray, they're spiritual. This is this is my, this is my religion, right? It's a mind, body, spirit thing. It's not just two years and fuck, get, go back to my old self. No, no, no. This is something where we're constantly emptying the bucket turning off alarms because life keeps happening these are tools for life I'm going to be doing my visuals and my spiritual downloads for life I'm going to be keep working that muscle up here the spiritual muscle up here my higher self for life I'm going to keep tapping into my consciousness and consciousness the collective consciousness and get that information that I need because life's going to throw me curveballs I'm going to need that I'm going to need that support and that help. So, I want everybody to know. If you just started, or if you've been doing other programs, and you're trying something of these new methods that I learned that work for me, no, it's still going to take time and be okay with that. Because, you know, people might be doing it for a week or two and going... Okay, I'm, I'm noticing some differences that are good. And some people are like, oh my God, it's getting worse. Always know it's going to get worse. It has to because you're doing exposure. When you do exposure, you cause a stress response. So that means old symptoms come back. You might create new symptoms, right? You're taking five steps back. Every time you do an exposure, you take five steps back. But you gain leverage. thing is, my version, you will take five steps back. It's going to get worse. But the thing is, with that, just because you go back and you feel like shit, you're going to feel like shit, means you're going to move forward. In leaps and bounds. Massive leaps and bounds. Right? Where the other program that I was doing, I came back to the forum because I couldn't, because I was triggering before. I came back and I was uh, noticing some of these... Um, you know, the pros that were, you know, on these programs that used to give me advice because I was desperate and scared. You know, I was going, what do I do? Oh, don't worry, just keep going. Don't worry. Right? Um, they were still stuck there. Some of them were there for three or five years. They were the, the long haulers with these programs. And they were still triggered. They were still dealing with a lot of the mental things. They were stuck like I was. But I was lucky. I was able to get out and find the answers. They were still stuck. And I saw that. I'm like, wow. I moved forward in, you know, in lightning speed. And these other people, in contrast, because it was important to see this for me. To give the check mark, to justify synchronicities going, yes, you're on the right path. Yes, look at what the difference. Right? Because that's how you learn. When you see that method, and you see this method of fucking up, you know, making mistakes, re, re, uh, readjusting, and finding the right path. There is a difference. And that's where timelines change. Some people in other programs, they're still 
right? Three, five years, and they're still they're still stuck. And some people, they do it in uh, a year. It also depends on how many symptoms you have, how sensitive you are, right? How, how high in the baseline you're at, the survival state, right? How many alarms you got on. That depends. Some people might only have a few things, so it'll be quicker. It also depends on your, you know, how long does it take for you to click? How long did it take for you to understand the information? Having that information is, when you see it, is one thing. But actually going, oh, aha, uh -huh, right? And that, the aha uh -huh moments, the holy fucking shit moments come along the journey while you're doing the work. At first, you might be like, okay, I see, I'm going to do, it makes sense, I think, but the oh, I fully understand now, I feel, I feel what's going on now. That takes time with doing the work. It takes time to get the aha moments. In the visuals, right? Yes, we're, we're sitting in dose to bring the baseline down, but don't forget, it's also about the golden nuggets of clarity that you're tapping in to consciousness. This shit's important, man. It's important. You need those along the way for yourself, right? Because everybody's journey towards recovery is unique. The fix is the same. Right? It doesn't matter what you have. The fix is the same. The methods are the same. But the journey is what makes it different. Your personality is what makes it different. Right? How long it takes you to get it to click. Because some people, it takes longer or it doesn't, it doesn't ever happen because they don't stick with it. Right? They go, I just, I just don't, I don't know. I'm going to try this medallion and this medallion. I'm going to get this book because it looks like more is better. More is better. And more is not better. Right? More is not, that it's irrelevant. What works is, is what works. Proof is in the pudding. What works is what works. So timelines, you know, it's, a lot of people say, don't look at timelines. Don't compare yourself to others. I agree, but I also think you should look at a timeline also because then you can kind of see well, what I went through and what makes sense and what to expect. If you're the person that's thinking, you know, I should be f feeling better within a couple of months with my OCD and my uh, symptoms and my anxiety and my brain fog and my blah, blah, blah. You know, it's been two weeks and I still have my brain fog went away, but it came back. This is, I'm feeling horrible right now know that you're just a spring chicken you just started it's still early it's still really early and guess what it's gonna get a lot worse right the more you go down this path the more you're unplugging and you know organizing and going through the layers of the onion the more you're stirring the pot the more you're moving shit around right the more the the limbic system is gonna pull back freak out eh, spikes are gonna happen like crazy you're gonna take 10 steps back you're gonna have symptoms uh, come back, you're going to have new ones come, and it's going to get very aggressive and relentless. The OCD is going to kick your ass left and left, right? It's going to be relentless. Not here to scare you. But it doesn't matter, because at the end of the tunnel, you get your life recovered, right? You're going to be recovered. So the work, some people don't like to, to hear that there is work involved. Just stick to the path. When it gets hard, stick even harder. I want to make sure that I tell people this. It's going to get fucking hard. But also know, don't expect you to be recovered in two weeks or a month or six months or eight months or a year or a year and a half, right? You're going to find different spikes along the way with different things. This is a fucking full on learning journey that shifts different problems you had year one will be you're gonna to have totally different issues that you're learning on year two, right? So if you're thinking, oh, you know, it's been only three weeks and you know, I'm starting to feel, it's irrelevant what you're feeling in two weeks. It's irrelevant what you're feeling in that first month, six months, a year, it's irrelevant. Because your brain is shifting, it's moving around, it's doing and it's gonna send you a lot of things that are uncomfortable or weird that you're gonna to wanna to try to figure out, fix and analyze just don't do that. Don't analyze, fix, or ruminate, or try to figure out. 
Just keep moving forward, right? Don't go to, don't talk too much about the good days. Oh, you know, well, I had, because you're analyzing. I had good days, but, but, and it's been really hard, man. It's been really hard, man. It's been really hard, man. I know. I know. And guess what? It's going to get harder. And I know it's, I get it. I fucking know what you're saying. The brain will make it seem like, holy fucking, it'll make you seem like you're, the worst nightmare is happening right now. The brain will overblow it so much that it's actually a lot worse than if you were to actually have the, the real thing happen to you. Right? Whatever your what if thought is for that particular day, your nervous system will make it 10 times worse than the actual real thing. That's how good it is at getting your attention and why you're going through this journey. You're literally going to be walking through fire and you're walking through hell through this. And your brain isn't trying to torture you. It's just trying to get your attention because it's it's relentlessly trying to keep you alive. It's going, no, but I, you got to be alive, man. I love you. You got to be alive. I'm going to do everything in my power to keep you alive, right? I'm going to send you alarms and fucking, no, oh, yeah, I know. And you're going to be like, oh, fuck. It's like, you're going to get, it's like you're being in an exorcism. This process is like an exorcism that you're going to go through five times a week, every day, month in, month out, right? Going to the store, it's like an exorcism. It's like, Okay, so I'm just gonna. <laughs> Holy fuck, how many? You didn't tell me it's gonna be like this? I'm like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gonna be just like that. Just like that. And probably 10 times worse. What? I don't wanna fucking hear that. I don't wanna fucking hear that. <laughs> right, Dolly? Are you wondering what the fuck I'm doing? It's like an exorcism. And if I put that out there now, then you'll expect it and understand when it happens. You'd be like, okay, he said this was gonna happen. I'm not that scared. And I'm not gonna quit, because I don't want you to quit. Because that's, that's the prime time to keep going, right? When you're hit with a thousand arrows and a thousand hands slapping you in the face upside, you know, right? And you feel like, you know, you're in a, in a shit storm, a, th a thick shit storm. Like so much shit. It's raining shit. It's pissing shit. There's shit. You're, you're, you're swimming in shit. When you know this information, you're going to go, oh, fuck it. I'm going to back do some backstrokes through this shit. Oh, this shit. Oh, somebody had peanuts. I can see. Oh, yeah, fuck. Good thing I'm not allergic to peanuts <laughs> or I'll be fucked. And all this shit swimming I'm doing. Oh, yeah. Right, that's a little bit of a... Uh, somebody's got ate some corn. Uh, swim over here. Some beets. Oh, fuck, it's nasty. It stinks bad. Ugh. Right? It's a big shit sandwich and you're going to take a thousand bites. If, if, you're, if I set the expectations, when it happens, you're going to be doing backstrokes through the shit and laughing. And, it, and I can say that and you're still going to freak out a bit. That's okay. That's, that's how you learn. And the timelines, I also want to make sure that I emphasis and set the expectations for timelines that uh, don't expect to feel better within eight months. It might get worse at eight months at a particular stage that you're at, right? It'll be different than the f first couple months. It'll be just different. They're totally different from each other. But it's just as hard here as it was hard here. People assume that later in, in time, everything's a lot easier. It is in a way, but you just deal with different problems, right? And that gets discouraging because people are thinking that they're not moving forward when they are. Right, and that's why I, I'm, I'm trying to make a timeline video so that people are, are prepared. When you're prepared, you know the information ahead of time, and shit starts to happen, right? You're gonna be able to keep, keep coasting through. So that's why I'm making 
the timeline video so you have some contrast um, and you can understand what to expect and prepare yourself so that you can move forward. Hopefully I was able to capture what to expect. <laughs> maybe, uh, I think, it, uh, yeah, you know. And what you should do, you should save this video. You know, put it in, uh, send it to yourself on WhatsApp or on your messenger on Facebook or email it to yourself so that when you go through this part of the journey, because it's going to be, you're going to be going through this a couple, bunch of times. You watch this video and you go, okay, okay. Then your trust comes back your confidence comes back and you get back on the path and you move forward right that's what I'm trying to do I want people to stick to it because that is a difference between getting your life back and not because people they get too scared and too wrapped up and they start to analyze and they fall off and then they're one of those people that you know, I've been doing brain retraining for like 10 fucking years. It doesn't fucking work. You'll end up being one of those people. And you can't help them. Because it, they need to help themselves. And the way I can get you to help yourself is to set expectations. So you're prepared. And you're going to be one of those ones that stick to it no matter fucking what. So the OCD short shitstorm. Because the brain is relentless at keeping you alive. Great. I think that's it for today. Uh, yeah, please subscribe, share, like, so that I can get this information out there to as many people as possible. Uh, I want to help. There's so many people that are stuck. I started joining some more groups, Facebook groups, and I'm seeing a lot of bad, like I've already seen a lot of bad information. I've already been blocked by a couple of Facebook groups. So the battle carries on. I'm staying strong. Uh, moderators are kicking me out people I got Karen's on there going oh my god this is so irresponsible what you're saying this is not this is oh my god kick him out I'm getting a lot of that um, it's expected right you gotta get some resistance people are gonna talk shit people are not gonna like your your methods people are not gonna they get triggered but it's worth it you know, you piss a couple people off so you can help the majority, help a lot of people get their lives back. That's what I, what I want to do. So if you want to share it with somebody that you know in your family or a friend or um, whatever, you know, send them my way. Get get them onto the YouTube channel. Hopefully, in the next within the, this year, twenty twenty four, I'll have a program, app, book, Audible book. And you can support me that way or you can join it. But for now, just uh, watch the videos and share and like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Have a good day.